Thank you for joining us. Mark Lindy, your host. Uh, you're watching election coverage for the 2017 November 7th election. And uh, BCA has done a series of de debates in different wards. Uh, we were not successful in arranging uh, Ward 3 debate. Councillor Ian Airy, who's the incumbent, uh, agreed to come on. His challenger did not. So I'm giving Councillor Ian Airy uh, 30 minutes of airtime to talk about his candidacy. Well, welcome. Thank nice you. To see welcome. You. Welcome, Mark. As always, it's a great pleasure to sit down with you. You know that. We've done this uh, numerous uh, times over and over, and uh, we always find uh, a lust for some type of new conversation other than what we even set out to, to do sometimes. But no, it, it, it is great, and I appreciate you, um, you know, still inviting me to, to join uh, the whole process, which, um, again, here we are now to the, to the finish line, pretty much, almost to November 7th, and we're only shy about three and a half weeks to, to go. So um, I, I do have to say I'm, I, I'm a little disenchanted that the fact that, you know, my opponent couldn't join me, whatever her reasons may be, those are her, her reasons. But, you know, that's the commitment you, you make when you start to even become a part of the political process and you want to be elected to an office. Um, you have to follow both ends. You have to be wherever you have to be. Um, and, people want to, and people want to hear difference of opinions. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. I ran so. for office and I did ten debates. I, I just asked the question where and when. Yep. So we'll we'll move we'll move forward. We'll at move this forward point. at that point. Um, and, uh, Dennis, I've been following you all the way back to when I started my career in cable. I, I remember school committee meetings in 1983. Mm. Okay, when you were on the school committee. Yep. Twenty years of service on the the school committee. Correct. Twelve years so far on the city council. Fourteen. Fourteen. I'm yes, sorry. I fine. did that last time too. I apologize. Yep. But why? more are you a glutton for punishment i'm just uh, asking that question you know something mark i have to tell you um you know that question's been asked to me numerous times over since i've been out campaigning and, and on the campaign trail as much as some people think that you know i'm not out there and people don't know who i am and you know i'm, I'm not representing the people but uh, but i am and when i'm out there people say i can't believe you, you you're still going forward and and we're glad to see you moving forward we, we still like to see you you know here and, and you know representing the people of ward three and uh, you know, there's some times when you sit down and you say, okay, when, when do you s stop? Or, or when do you slow it down or do something different? But right now, I, Mark, I still, to this day, I still have a lust for it and taste for it as, as the day I begun back in 1977 when I first ran for school committee. I lost the first time, you know what I mean? Lost what back then. What got you to begin with back in the day to get in? Why did you run the first time? Back in the day, believe it or not, when I was a younger gentleman, I should say, when I was still in high school, I had... Uh, uh, my godfather, uh, Ralph Ruggiero, was a police officer here in the city of Brockton mm -hmm. and uh, involved in the Democratic Party big time, big time. Him and Frank Bellotti were the best of friends, you know what I mean? And he decided that he was going to run for Plymouth County Sheriff right. back in 1974, it was. Okay. And at that point in time, um, I, you know, hopped on the campaign trail with him and got going and, and got this feeling for, for just politics, you know what I mean? Just wanted to, I don't know, I just... just Enjoyed it. Enjoyed meeting people, being out, socializing with people, listening to people, you know, what their concerns were, and he even loved it himself. You know, uh, unfortunately, the following year, 1975, he had he had passed away. So, um, and I had already talked to him about even before he passed about. I think someday I'll run for school committee. He says, "Well, that's where you start." He was a believer, and you start low, and you and you come up to the rank. That's he treated it like it was a police officer's job. You start somewhere, and you come up to the rank. And that was the taste for it, you know, the taste I had for it, and um, still do, to be truthful with you. I mean, it's still, it's still there. It's, it's just, it's there in the blood. Now, you've served through some very difficult, tough times. Mm -hmm. Proposition two and a half when you were on the school exactly. committee, massive cuts to the school department, personnel and everything else, capital, the whole nine yards. Everything. And then you've been through it on the council side exactly. with uh, bad days. I know you were friends with uh, former Mayor Pataro. Correct. Um, you worked closely with him yes. over the course of time. Um, it's not a fun job all the time. It's it not all, you know, roses and glory, I guess yeah, I would say. Yeah, that's what I say. It's not roses and glory. It's not apple pie and ice cream either. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And that's what I try to tell some of the new people that are, are running. It's not what you think it is, you know? And you're right. We've had some difficult times. And um, we got through the difficult times. But I no sooner got elected um, in 1979 to serve in the school committee. In the fall of election, 1981, what did you have? Proposition two and a half. And then sitting Mayor David Crosby, sitting Mayor David Crosby turned and, and actually opened up his bottom drawer of his desk and said, since Proposition two and a half is now going to come in place, there's no need to have me because it's not going to be, not going to be a pretty scene 
for these next few years. And he was right. And look what happened, as you said. It got tight. It got better in, in late 80s, uh, mid, late 80s, early 90. The greatest that we saw was in 1993 because the lawsuit had gotten so far that we were able to see the Education Reform Act of 1993 and bring in a surplus of, of monies into the education system for seven years. And that alone also brought in the desegregation plan. Right. Last words Matt George said to us when he was leaving the superintendent of schools to the school committee back then, don't, whatever you do, pass up the op opportunity, get involved in the desegregation plan, balance the schools, because you can see yourself probably building four to five brand new schools at an 80 to 90% reimbursement to tax dollar. Yes, huge. And Matt, and Matt was to, even to this day, and I had lunch with him just a few weeks ago, we, we, we met Matt, I met Matt, and uh, we were talking that, and he was right, he, he just said, it was the greatest thing that ever happened to the city. If that had never happened, you'd be renovating your, school, your old school building still. Well, if you look at some of the, the older buildings That's that right. have been surplus, the Howard School, the Lincoln School, school. the Whitman School, the Goddard School. Exactly. Those are pretty old, the Shaw School, they're old, old, old buildings. Old, older buildings, There yep. was one missed opportunity, and I don't know if it was political wherewithal or whatever, but there was at one point in time there was an opportunity to do a debt exclusion exactly. and renovate all the rest of the schools for, for low money. Right. But it, it, it was didn't. shelved. It, it, it didn't happen. Didn't and happen. that would have been renovating the four existing exactly. junior highs at the time, who, which are now middle schools. Right. Um, I, I, I personally wish it had happened. I know that in Brockton it would be very hard to pass Prop 2.5 or debt exclusion. Right. But we didn't even try. No, we didn't, okay. we didn't try with that. And it was, it, was, it was too bad. Yeah. Um, we didn't. The, that election, that 1981 election, when Crosby decided not to run for re-election was That's a very right. interesting election. It proves, and if you look at even the last election in the preliminary, even though it had a low voter turnout, in Ward 6 it was a 13-vote race that separated John Draczynskis from being from the, the number exa two. Exactly. Okay, Linda exactly. Belzotti, uh, Mayor Carpenter, uh, in uh, over in Ward 5 with Dennis DiNapoli, yes. Ian Beauregard. Exactly. Every vote counts. Exactly okay, does. So Ward 3 is a a big ward, it's a participatory ward, it people is. are out there. What are you hearing out in the street as you're going door to door? Well, as I'm, as I'm going door to door and the people that I talk with, uh, naturally when you get in the thrust of, of Ward 3 in itself and, and you get into where a lot of your, um, your neighborhoods still preside, as I, as I say it, you know what I mean? We used to have a lot of, a lot of your children are still going to the Kennedy School mm -hmm. um, and, and you have others that are, you know, obviously chose to go to some others that could be at the Hancock as well and they could be at one of the other schools as well. But what I'm hearing from the people from within Ward 3 in itself is the fact that they still have great concerns um, for what's happened in the city. Um, public safety is a big factor in the city, big, big factor in the city. Um, I do have to say, and I say it gingerly, that they are concerned um, that the way the administration is running the city seems like we pay attention to just concentrated certain, certain types of groups of people, and that's what they're getting. That's what a lot of people are getting distasteful with. Um, when I'm out there, and, and I, all the years I've been elected, I represent all of the people of Ward 3. It doesn't matter who they are, what they are, what, it doesn't matter. If you're, if you're in Ward 3, I represent you. And sometimes you're seeing it differently throughout the, the city in the way that it's, it's being done. And people feel, it, you know, they just feel like they're being left out. They're being left out. Um, again, I go back to public safety as one of the main, main thrusts of what uh, people have great concern. Not seeing enough police officers coming through the city in itself. Not, en not, enough, not enough of the traffic of them coming into, into the thrust of the neighborhoods. Uh, as you know, this summer we've had a few situations that occurred in the, in the neighborhoods. People beginning to feel like they come home at night and it's not quiet like it used to be. It's noisy. You know, things are going on that they just don't like to see. And that means that we're not paying enough attention. As much as we do the best we can, we know our staffing level is short, but we're not spending the time that we should be in there. And, and that's what people are singing out to me. Uh, great, great concern for, uh, for public safety. Uh, of course, you always hear the concern about, you know, the tax dollars, what's the tax dollars doing for me, what's it doing for my streets, which I've tried over the last 14 years to do as many streets as I can, you know, as, as counselor. Some still remain private. You have to get them accepted to become public, and hopefully you've got 
the, the funding that you can to make those streets, you know, be repaved in the next year or two. It's not easy. It's not easy, you know, but those are the things. Is, is that a political process or is it a necessity process? Uh, we, we did three debates with different people. We talked about roads and some of the other wards. Ward 6, it was brought up. Yeah. Um, I asked that question a long time ago, got me into a lot of trouble. Hilberg Ave was the question, the right. question I right. asked. Right, yeah. Um, you know, different parts of Hilberg Ave seemed like it was... It was different at the time. Exactly. Uh, a, a, doing a street is very expensive, even a it small is. street, it because is. it's not just the street. It's the pipes. Right. It's the, you know, I don't know what all the technical terms are for them. Right. But right. Um, each councilor gets, what, two or three streets? You get you get two or three streets, and it, it is a process where you, you make a selection of what you'd like to see done. You move that, that uh, list over to the DPW commissioner, and between the DPW commissioner and the mayor, they sit down. Doesn't matter who the mayor is, but that's that's the process. They sit down and go through. You know, oh, here are the three streets for Ward Three, or here are the three streets for Ward Four, or two streets. You know, are they needed? Are they fair? Are they okay? You know, are they deplorable? We even use they even use that word. You know what right, I mean? If they right. get to be deplorable, then you really have to start to to do something. Um, years back. You had a program where you changed some of your water mains and some of your side streets. There were two, three-inch water mains, and you brought brought it into compliance to be a six, eight-inch water main. So you had your your flow of water, which was was much much differently. But at the same time, when they replaced those pipes, yeah, you had a bad street for maybe the the next following winter. By by that spring, you had a brand new street. Mm -hmm. That program went by the wayside about six, seven years ago. Unfortunately, too bad that it did. But that's a way that you know a lot of neighborhood streets got reconstructed. Um, and you're right, costly, costly. I, I mean, it's about three hundred fifty thousand to four hundred thousand dollars to do a street, and that's not sometimes even thinking about are you putting sidewalk with curbing? Right. You know, that's the other issue. Taking part of people's yards. Ex for, to, exactly. To to and 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 Hillberg Ave is, <laughs> Hillberg Ave is something I already have on a list and have spoken to the DPW commission about because the fire department has even spoken to me about the fact that when they have to go up that street from Warren Ave to Longwood. It's just getting so deplorable that they can only go, at, at, and the fire truck doesn't go to high speed anyways, but they right. can't even make the speed they want to to get up that road because of the condition it's in. Something we have to look at doing. Talk about the relationship between city council and the mayor. There's a legislative branch and an executive branch. Exactly. We don't have a judicial, okay? Right. But uh, at the beginning, uh, you know, at one point there was a little bit of discord between, you know, to say the least, to say it politely, between the mayor and the city council. You've been there. You're a veteran city councilor. Right. How important is the relationship to, for people to work together and to get things done? Well, working with the mayor is, is somewhat important because that's how you get things done in, in your ward. And that's how I've been successful over the years with all the mayors that I've served under. And I came in under Jack Units. Um, we were on the school committee together then, but I served uh, as, as council starting with Jack Units. So I went Jack Units, Harrington, those audience, and, and Mayor Carpenter. And you work together collectively because you want to get the things that you, you need done for your ward. That's, that's how those things do occur. You know, you appropriate the funds the city council does to run the city, but in order for you to get some of those funds into your into your area, you, you've got to somewhat get along. There's there's been disaccords, you know what I'm saying, um, and there's probably some disaccords right now, even as we sit here and, and, and speak. You know what I mean? Through through what we've had over the last couple of years, and in, in the way that the mayor sees things somewhat differently, the way the the council sees it um, doesn't necessarily mean that we're totally opposed to it or opposed to him. I know he has a, a great comment sometimes in making, well, hopefully we can get this done if the council gives me the money. There hasn't been too, too many times when we haven't given him the money or the funds he's needed to do something. You know, we always, especially when it comes to public safety, you know, we always go back and try to work together for that because that's one, one important goal, you know, that you have to tend to for, the, for this city is public safety. So um, uh, right now, I mean, there's probably some ups and downs, you know, but, you know, you, you have to work those things out. I have to say when I served as council president two years ago, um, you know, he and I, he and I, we did fine together. Um, we worked together well. And, you know, when the mayor is not present or he's out of the city and he's totally out of the country, the council president is, you know, second in command. So, you know, you're in charge. But still, I mean, there's, um, there's, there's, um, there the, the, has to be some workability if you want to get some things done in your ward. Now, um, Something going on in Ward 3 that's controversial is yes. the proposed development on West Chestnut Street. Exactly. Um, you have solidly sided <coughs> with the residents, exactly. with your constituents. That's right. And you even had a sign 
placed in your honor mm. on there. Mm. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? <laughs> well, let, let's say this. A, you're correct. I, I'm with the residents in regards to that project because I just don't think it makes any sense to have an access road into a project that's going to be built in West Bridgewater and an access road coming in through West Chestnut Street in the city of Brockton. What's the give, what's the give to us, to be truthful with you? Yeah, some point, you know, there could be the tie into the, you know, the sewer system, water system, and that's going to give you some type of, you know, revenue, but not anywhere near, and not anywhere near the, the amount of money the developer's been quoted in saying in the newspaper, and I just don't have that figure in front of me. Um, so it has made some, you know, different of, of um, sparked some, you know, relationships there that just aren't working right at this particular point in time. And um, for what transpired right before the primary, I should say not even, what, eight hours, 12 hours before the opening of the polls to, to see, you know, a, a sign go up and have my name on it and the abuse of the city seal, I, I think was totally, totally an unjust and, and, and not even, very distasteful to be truthful with you, very distasteful in, in that whole situation. Um, and the comment to be made, well, you know, I want to honor him for his years of service. No, it was more like a slap in my face and hope that the people would probably turn around and say, aha, so he is with them, and that's not true. It never, never, ever will be true. And as long as I'm counsel of the ward, I will be working with those people. Matter of fact, those people are gonna join me next week at a ward meeting for further discussion of what we're gonna be doing next Tuesday evening, the uh, 17th of October. And uh, we're gonna, you know, we're, we're on top of this and we're gonna stay right on top of it. Um, and where it all ends up, I don't know where it will end up, Mark, to be truthful with you. But, um, and even right now, people go by, they see them clearing land, they see trees coming down, and they figure the projects will go. It's not true. There isn't even, be truthful with you, that little opening is just what it is, an opening. Mm -hmm. It's not a street, it's not an avenue, it's not a roadway. It's just an opening to allow them to get in to the land, which is, which is owned by the Petronelli family, and that's no in bad taste of the Petronelli family who's been in Brockton for many, many, many years and have done a lot of great good things for this city of Brockton, um, but still. You know, when it comes to that, that project, I, I, I'm not turning my cheek to it, and, and, and I have no clue of how, you know, if somebody else becomes the ward council, how that person's going to be, but, you know, I, I, have a, I have a concern for how it may happen and, and you know, or what could happen if somebody else was there, but hopefully, you know, I still look positive to, to everything being in the positive direction. Now, your opponent during the preliminary talked mm -hmm. about the fact that people don't know who you are, okay? I don't quite get that. I've known who you are for a long time. Okay, how do you feel about that? I mean, that I, I know. Look at I know you're positive, but I also know uh, you might have a little hot blood every once in a while if, yeah, if you it, get it, upset. It, you you get a friendly face, uh, but it might get under your it, skin. It, it, Do you want to talk about that? It, I, I know it, she's not here to debate you, and I would have asked the question, or Mr. Foote or Shana Barnes right. probably would have asked the question. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and I don't know what she actually means by that, but um, the same as when, you know, it's mentioned that, um, I'll, I'll, you know, Ward 5 deserves better representation than that. What's the meaning of that as well? I mean, I've been to every council meeting that I can think of since I've been elected. I mean, I missed maybe two, three. I think I was sick, and, and one was when my mother passed away. She, she d deserved my respect of... You know, naturally, I wasn't going to be present in a meeting. You know that. You, mm -hmm. you just went through it yourself um, with your passing of your dad. But still, I mean, to say that, you know, I don't represent the people in the correct way, I, I, I just don't get that. And, and for saying they don't know who I am, Mark, that brings me back to where I started and to where I've gone for the 20 years, you know, as a school committee member representing the parents and children of Ward 5, the 14 years here representing the people, taxpayers of, of Ward 3 for the last 14 years, um, I, I think people know who I am, and I mean, you know as well as I do, there's going to be people that you probably someday will never meet mm -hmm. that will vote for you just because, you know, and I mean that. I, and I'm going to just tell you something quick. I had a telephone call just two weeks ago. A, a lady called me, and she said, you know, you know, I was told to call my city councilor. I said, okay, how may I help you? Well, I live on Ash Street. Okay. A gentleman tripped over some wires, and the wires are down. What are we going to do? I, you know, I feel bad for the gentleman that, that tripped. I said, well, where are the wires? Where about how they are? And she explained to me. I said, well, let me make a phone call. I think the fire department can come out and handle that. Just make sure that no one gets near there. If you see anybody near there, I'll, I'll hop right on it. And she says, I've never met you, but I always vote for you. I said, thank you. And that's a true, true story. Cross my heart. 
I mean, so do every does everybody know you? Uh, I mean, really? I mean, you know, I mean, yeah. I you mean, definitely do the ward meetings. I, I definitely you, do my and ward you meetings. Tell us so you can publicize them. Uh, the, the joke today was Tom Tom Monahan is the city councilor most on TV for his ward meetings right, because right. he literally calls me up and asks me, you have asked me too, Ward 5, Ian Beauregard yeah, has asked me. We yeah. try to get out there. We That's do right. the, the, the city council, the finance committee, the school committee, and we can't be every place no, all you the can't. time. How can but you yeah. we can let people know about it. And when you were council president, you used cable Absolutely. to get the word out. Council Sullivan did as well. We're hoping to redo that now that it's out of the summer session. Right. We're going into, and I hope we in, do. In, into, the, into the fall session. Um, what do you see that's, I guess, left to do. We talked in the, in, in about the, the inequity in school funding in the 1993 yes. ed reform. Yeah. Uh, looks like Brockton might lead the way again right. and do another lawsuit. I don't know who it's going to be named after this time because right. it goes all the way back to Webby and McDuffie and Hancock. Uh, we'll find somebody else to name it after. But right. do you think that's a good strategy so we can get our I, fair share of our funding? I, I think it is. I think it's a great strategy that, that needs to be, begin now, more well, sooner than, you know, than anything because it's not going to happen overnight. And you know that as well as I do. It's going to take a good... It could take a good eight to ten years, and I hate to say that, but it could take that. Let's hope it only takes four to five years, because that whole process has to start somewhere. And what you've got to what you've got to go through. Let's just hope that we can get other communities to sign on, and be a little bit easier than it was, you know, back when that whole process started back in the in the eighties. Mm -hmm. um, and we already put a hundred thousand dollars away in the budget for for the starting process of, of legal fees, but it's not going to happen overnight. But I think it's a strategy. I, I think it has to be looked at somehow, some way. We've got to bring back some of that funding back into the school system. Um, and, and I'm going to be, as a city council, I'm going to stay right on top of it. I mean, you've got classroom size right now, 35, 36. That's absurd. It wasn't that way when I was on the school committee. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't let it happen. I, it wasn't even that way I, that I can recall when I was even in the, in the elementary school and, and, you know, and even junior high school. So we've got to, we've got to stay on top of uh, trying to do what we can so that that can be reduced and, and that the level of learning, and I, and I feel confident that our teachers are doing the job that they're, that they're made to do. They're, they're doing an outstanding job, but still, let's not overburden them, too, with what you have in the classroom, because that can, that can lead to teachers saying, what am I doing? I'm, I'm feeling burned out, and I've got, to, I've got to go. And you don't want to do that. You don't want to lose that. You know, that's the thrust you want. Uh, so I, um, I also just want to point out that um, I think, you know, some things that are still left to do, and hopefully uh, maybe be able to team up with the... Uh, with uh, uh, a council of Ward 4, whomever it might be. Um, you know, we need, to, we need a market for the south end of the city. And I know right now there's some, you know, work going on with the Campello framework, and I've been involved with that uh, in the last meetings that they've had uh, through the economic development uh, process of City Hall with Mr. May and his uh, assistant planner, Shane. You know, we've been, we've been working with that, and uh, Pam Gurley was there as well. Um, but you know something, we need to start doing something now there because people are, are still asking for, why don't we have a market on the south end of the city? You know, and, and it brought people from West Bridgewater in, you know what I mean? But it brings people from the south, more Copeland, you know, those areas there, you know what I mean, Waterford, right over to, you know what I'm I saying? Don't, I don't get it, Dennis, because the Aldi is opening up at the mall. Yeah. There's Market Basket right there. Yeah. And all is going to be next door. Right next door. It's kind of too bad that it didn't end up over there. I know they've talked about also a school in, yes. in, in, in the south side of the city. We need one. Um, I know the market issue is I guess you can't have another market there because right. it's in the lease or whatever the legal language is. Could, could that be a school site? It, 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 it could very well be as well. You know, it could very well be. Um, keep in mind, too, where Shaw's was... Don't forget, half of that building goes into West Bridgewater. Right. But now, if something was ever to happen, even though you've got some wetland situations there with uh, the park lot where Kmart is, if something was to happen there um, down the road with Kmart, and I might say that's been mentioned a few times, but Kmart is is, is profitable here in Brockton, it's though. It's holding on. It is holding on, and, and, and I like Kmart. It reminds me like, Going through Kings. Kmart, <laughs> Kmart still sells Tom McCann shoes. Exactly. You know yeah, it's, exactly. But it's still, you're right, it's holding on. It's still, it's doing profit more, more so than they thought it would be, even even to this this year level, to be truthful with you. So, um, but do we need another school? We definitely need a school down on the south side. Um, the prime spot probably would have been, but, you know, a piece of it's already been sold, is, is once Copeland Chevrolet had left. 
yeah. and they had ever struck a chord with um, the DeSantis family and been, been able to bought the whole piece of property. Sure. That to me is where a school should have been because you're right, you're right off the main drag. You're right off the main I drag. Still miss Cape Way Mirror. Yes, yes. I know it was uh, we on do. its last legs. Yeah. We lost all the restaurants in Brockton. We did. We need more restaurants. We definitely we did. do. Um, they told me we got about five minutes left, so I want to leave a couple of minutes for you to kind of close. Sure. But um, the, the question I have is, even though you're the Ward 3 counselor, and mm -hmm. downtown isn't Ward 3, Campello isn't Ward 3, but right. downtown isn't per exactly. se, do you have any idea, you yourself individually, what we can do differently to jumpstart downtown? Um, you lived here when downtown mm -hmm. was big. Right. Okay. I had the tail end of it. We're we're close in age, but right. I missed it. Okay. There's not. It, it, there's a lot of development down here. It's beautiful housing. They're going to build another parking garage. There's no restaurants. We don't have any bookstores in Brockton. We don't have right. a movie theater in Brockton. We don't. Anything that you would have as an idea? The one thing I always say to jump start downtown, the first thing you need to do is two-way traffic, mm -hmm. and I still say that is the key component to what you want to do to get downtown going again because you've got to let the traffic flow in its direction so that people can come in from other avenues than just going and watching for one-way streets. They can't go down, can go down, we can't go down, we can't touch. That drives people out of the city. It, it really does. And that, to me, is the most important thing. You do that, then I think from that point you can move forward and still do some of the things that this whole urban renewal plan is, is going to be doing. You know, he's going to bring restaurants, supposedly. You know what I mean? Different different situations. You're going to have, what, what's it, 40 hour growth is down here as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to end up having different, you know, you, you know, the growth of, of naturally housing above and in stores, retail shops down below. Um, yes, a new parking garage is, is, is due to come in. In, in you know short time, hopefully it's going to begin. I, I don't know where that is and when they're doing that. But still, to me, you've got to jump start with two-way traffic. You really do. You really do. Cut the two-minute signal. I oh. want to give you at least a minute and a half. Wow. Do I look at you or I can look right in the camera? Look in the camera. Okay. Yeah, the I'm, I'm done looking at you. Okay. But any, anyhow, I, I will look at you, though, because I do want to say thank you, Mark, and, and I thank uh, BCA. Um, you know, for doing all that they do and, and what they've done through this whole election process, through the primary, through the election, to accommodate everybody. And uh, again, um, it would have been nice to have my opponent, but that it is what it is. So here we are. But uh, again, here I am, Dennis Sanieri, City Council from Ward 3. Um, it is election year. I am running uh, for my eighth term. And uh, I'm, I'm asking you for your vote. I'm asking you for your support. I'm asking that you allow me to remain as the City Council from Ward 3. Allow me to finish some of the things that I still feel aren't complete in Ward 3. Allow me to keep working for you and, and, and working for the city in itself. I, I think we've got a great city here, city of champions. We, we are doing the right things and moving in the, in the right direction. So I still want to be a part of it. Um, and my main job is to represent you, the people of Ward 3, all of the people of Ward 3. I am available. I am in, I, I'm, I'm out there the best that I can be. I, I give it on my, my best and I'll continue to do that uh, for the next term as well. So election day is Tuesday, November the 7th. So please, please, I ask you, when you go to the polls, to please consider re-electing Dennis Neary, the incumbent city council from Ward 3, so that I can continue working for you. So I appreciate all your support in the past and the future. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Thank, Thank you, you for Mark. joining us. And we'll be talking to you about council issues as well. Okay. Because you're still a counselor Thank you. until election day. That's right. Okay. That's right. Appreciate um, it, Mark. You're watching uh, Brockton Community Access, uh, channels 12 and 9. Uh, we'll be covering more election, doing more election coverage all the way up to November 7th. But most of all, do your civic duty and vote. 9.5% in the preliminary was not good. We don't want to just double it. We want to quadruple it if we can. Local elections are more important the national elections. So do your civic duty and vote. Thanks for joining us.